just a prayer away. Streets of magic and deadly. Arizona girl is going to absolutely trounce them one by five. Shona from ATB here for this week's edition of ATB TV. Um, I'm going to speak about the results and runners and then um, earlier today I caught up with Christine Jeffries, one of our pre-trainers and uh, I'm going to show you her facilities, how she does things and we'll get to know her a little bit more. So um, over the last week we had a few winners which was good. Um, Geelong last Wednesday we had host me finish fourth, it was an unlucky run um, and a win won't be too far away. Ticket to Turak finished fourth, probably should have won, but went too hard too early and um, its fitness faded out on that one. Um, we had Grand Arrow finish fifth at Hamilton on Friday. Um, he's a couple of starts back in now from his prep, so he's improved in fitness and a win won't be too far away from him. We had Jen Y finish second. Uh, she should have won and no doubt she'll be winning again shortly. And on the Friday night, we had Intravenous, who finished fourth. She was really unlucky in her run. She settled at the rear of the field. And did she come home when she um, let loose? She really made up some lengths up the straight. And she'll be winning next start, I have a feeling. On Monday, on Australia Day, we had Tayo. And he got a, a fifth win, this preparation. He's in super form. Um, he looks fantastic. Murray's doing a fant fantastic job with him. His prize earnings now has just ticked over 300000 so congratulations to the owners. Um, hope you're enjoying the ride, and um, let's hope another win's just around the corner. Um, Wednesday, we had um, Benindi. She had her first start with Tony Golan up at Ipswich, and she ran a good race. However, she missed the start by about three lengths, and then she over-raced, and um, her fitness just faded out towards the end of her run as well. Tony's going to take the blinkers off her and put some winkers on and um, we'll see how she goes. But he's really happy with her. She's put on some nice weight. Um, we do have some shares available in her. If you're interested in getting involved, give me a call or Darren. Um, she'll probably have another start in about two weeks. So it's a bit exciting. Um, Tony thinks she's, you know, she's got a few wins in her so we'll be looking for her um, running on. At Ballarat on Wednesday we had a winner with Princess Hussey. Congratulations to all the owners. She ran a really good race. She showed a nice little turn of foot going up the straight and um, we'll look, to look for her to be running on somewhere um, in step up in class next start. But congratulations. And we also had Chloe Anna finish third, her second run in for the prep. She's still a little bit fat so she's going to take improvement from that run and um, a win won't be too far away from her either. Uh, we had Stylish Lily finish 8th today in what was um, pretty disappointing. She was drawn an awkward gate um, and instead of probably settling at the rear of the field, um, Dean Yendel elected to go up fast and hard too early and sat four wide for just about the entire trip and used up too much energy too early. So um, she tailed off to finish 8th which was a bit disappointing because she should have won that race. Um, Friday night we're off to the valley with two runners where we've got Bear Min running. She should go pretty well. And we've also got Ticket to Turak who really enjoys his track so um, keep an eye out for him. On Saturday at Flemington we've got Firehouse Rock resuming. Uh, first up obviously from a spell. He's uh, on his way to bigger and better things so keep an eye out for him. And then on... Sun Monday we're off to store where we've got three runners in Grand Arrow, The Last Angel and Glockenspiel. All of those have got a really good chance so um, keep an eye out for those three at stall. And on Tuesday at Terang we've got nominations for Gen Y and Already Like Her. So earlier today I caught up with Christine Jeffries, uh, one of our pre-trainers at Kyneton and here we are. Escape the rain, getting ready for her daily workout. Say hi, Christina. Hello. <laughs> Escape the rain, having her daily workout. In very relaxed surroundings. Yep. Can 
another jump of hands in the shoe. Yeah. Well, they keep you busy then. She'll want to stick her beak in your <laughs> to your jumper. Shona from ATB here and I've got Christina Jeffrey with me today. She's uh, part of the ATB team and an important part of the ATB team. She's uh, one of our pre-trainers that we use and she does a fantastic job. Welcome Christina. Thank you very much Shona. I know when we do updates to say that people's horses have gone in for pre-training at Kite and at Christina Jeffries, they say, oh where's that, what's it like? So here we are and they, you can see Christina and meet Christina and um, have a look at the facilities. We've just watched Escape the Rain work and she, you know, she really enjoys it out here. It's nice and peaceful and relaxing. So Christina, tell me a bit about yourself. How did you get involved in horses? Um, well, I suppose long story cut short, um, I'm American born, English brought up, um, but I've been in Australia for the longest and the horses have just been a passion, um, you know, equestrian background, um, but you know, growing up overseas you don't have a lot of money, but over here you can do anything you like. Um, and I was a good rider early and um, I went to work in New South Wales when Bruce McHugh owned Chipton Lodge and rode a lot of breakers up there and um, a lot of pre-training um, and then came back down to Victoria when I was in my early 20s. And I've just sort of worked for different people and then been self-employed probably for the last, you know, 19 or you know, 18 years. I'm 41 now and um, it's just what I do. Yep, and you've turned your passion into your work. I have, I So have. you're getting paid to ride horses instead of paying to keep your own. I have, and I yeah. remember sending Darren a text message um, when I first met Imaging and I said I feel like a thief getting paid to ride this horse because uh, it was so nice. So, yeah. so yeah, I love them. We do have some lovely horses and they're well educated so when you get them from the breakers, you know, they'll go for a spell and then you they come here and they're quite well behaved. They are, they're, they're good. I mean, you know, um, Bruce obviously does a really good job with them. Um, like I said, they're, they're great on the ground and as soon as you get on them, they go forward. Um, and that's that's all you can ask for. And, you know, I fine tune a little bit um, with a bit of dressage background to make sure that they're round and soft mm -hmm. and, and move off your legs, which people say is a load of rubbish for racing, but I don't believe it is no, at all. No, I think all. it's an um, integral part. You know, they, yeah. they have to know what leg aids are and how they work and it also helps with keeping their muscles supple, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think so, exactly. And, um, I remember Joe Braun, a big vet that was with Percy Sykes, and he said to me, he said, education can often win the race. It may only win one race, but he mm -hmm. said, oh, education can win a race. And, yeah. and I've sort of remembered that for, um, for a number of years. So. Yeah, well, you can't just expect them to go out there and run. They need to know what they're doing, and they need to listen to the instructions from the jockey, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Some <laughs> says jockey listen to the instructions from the trainer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's two minds out there. Yeah. <laughs> it, might, it might be conflicting, but anyway. So when you get a horse from us, what, what's the process that you do? It uh, depends on whether I know them or not. Mm -hmm. um, say it's an unknown two-year-old, uh, they'll um, definitely the first day is I'll put a roller on them. Mm -hmm. um, that's assumed after they've been shod and had their teeth done. Yep. Um, I'll put a roller on them and take them down to the round yard. And it's not, and you get a feel of whether they're going to have a bit of buck when you put the girth on them. Um, and then I tie their heads down just to make sure they've got good yep. mouths. Um, so I'm going to show you a photo of what Christine is talking about. And here it is. So that's Escape the Rain with the roller on, and then what do you do? Oh, um, so once they, they've given into the into their, into their the bridle like she um, has in that photo, mm -hmm. um, next day as the saddle goes on and I go on. So yeah. um, then I'll ride them in the round yard, just get a feel of their education, whether mm -hmm. they do have flexion and bend and, um, and how they are in the mouth actually under saddle. They may get two days, three days, depends on the horse. Yeah. This is two, two year olds. Yeah, and um, it gives you time to get to know them and yeah, it gives them time to get to know you. Exactly, and I rough them up a bit too, you know, rub mm -hmm. my leg, legs up the rib cage and flap yeah. and whack and stuff so they know I'm there and um, and then they just, I, you know, I get on in the wash bay here and off we go up the road. Yeah. So, um, and that's usually within six days they're up and down the roads and doing their job. Yeah. Um, older horses that I know, uh, like supplements when she came back this time in, I just um, saddled, saddled her up in the wash bay, got on and went out. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, because she's the devil I knew. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so working on the road, like it's a hard surface, but that's really good for strengthening um, tendons and ligaments, and it also um, helps mineralise the bone, doesn't it? I think so too, yeah. and I think it's it's all about balance and control too. You you don't go up there doing three quarter pace. No, um, I only canter. Um, on the uphill, um, yeah. I never do it on the downhill, even if it's a slight downhill incline. I just yeah. tend to, to canter them up the hill. Um, I pick and choose where the rocks are, um, obviously, because mm -hmm. that's that's the only thing that probably um, bites me on the bum yeah. a bit, is that they can get stone bruises. Yeah. Um, and I've had one or two, but nothing major. Yeah. Um, and the, the roads are great for them. There's mm -hmm. kangaroos, there's rabbits, there's, yeah. you know, they just learn to go forward and, and, and you know. It's a great environment. It is.
And so once you're comfortable on, on the mat on the road and they're you know, accepting everything and ready to move forward, what do you do with them then? Well, I, I, I do a few miles up the road as well. So once they're, they're um, educated and balanced up the road, then I start to do some miles for actual fitness purposes as well. Um, and they can get up to doing about six kilometres, some of them. Right. You know, obviously the older horses and the rehab horses and stuff. Yeah. Then I'll take them to the track. And usually I'll take the young ones to the track um, two, maybe three times, depending on their temperament, just for a slow look around. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll often find a mate for them with yeah. another trainer. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, um, they, they go into starting doing their three-quarter work and then move into their evens. And, and generally speaking, you know, I haven't galloped um, any of the Australian thoroughbred horses. Yeah. So, um, and I don't, you know, as much as I'd love to, yeah. I don't. Um, <laughs> Give them yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then they go into Darren's. Yeah. So, um, and I know that we is very happy with you know, the way you turn out the horses when you get them. You know, they're at a great fitness level and they look fantastic. They're nice and round and robust. Yeah. And yeah. Shiny and gleaming. Yeah. And he's no fool either. Like he, yeah. he knows they're ridden as well. Yeah. You know, I think he, he, there's a big difference between going on walking machines all the time and being ridden. And I'm yeah. pretty sure he knows they're ridden and, yeah. and they are. You yeah. know. Um, and I love them. They're just, you know, yeah. when they're here, they're mine. So, if, what's your uh, it's a tricky question? What's your favourite ATB horse? Imaging and definitely tie you. Oh, yeah. Although he and I fought a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you but definitely. Had stern special. words. Yeah, we had stern words. And we rode in the snow. <laughs> oh, really? <yeah. laughs> oh, gosh. Kind in winter. Yeah, well, hopefully we're going to get another win out of him in a few weeks. You'd think so, wouldn't you? So it's your very uh, start that's got him to where he is now. Yeah. But you hope that, um, <laughs> you hope the groundwork, well, he was a good horse before yeah. I got him, but you hope the groundwork gives the longevity in their preparation. Yeah. You that's know, what's important. I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. The better start they have, the longer you have a horse. Yeah. Or, yeah. And he came in with feet problems as well. Like he didn't. He wasn't just one you could just get on and go. He, he had. Um, he had sort of some confusing problems um, that did worry me. And I did ring the vets about him and just got a little bit of help. And um, you know, although he never went lame or anything, he was still able to work through um, his little problems. And then yeah. all of a sudden, he was a million bucks. So. You know, I'm very fussy about them, particularly yeah. with their, you know, things wrong with them and stuff like that. And and, um, and that's why I like doing your horses as well. Yeah. Is that um, nobody pushes me to push them to push them. Yeah. You know, if they're it's lame, when they four days there. off. Yeah. yeah. If if they have a change in the joint, Darren's happy to come and pick them up and take them home. You know, it's yeah. it's not a it's not a um, a factory process. Yeah. And I like that a lot. That suits me. And so a new two-year-old in its for its first prep you might have for four to six weeks? Probably longer. Yeah? Yeah, probably longer um, because they're greener. Because yeah. it, it can take me two to three weeks just to get them um, well mannered and controlled. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously the ones I've got now aren't, aren't like that, but I've yeah. had a couple that have um, had been longer. So sometimes I can have them eight to twelve. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the thing. No, no one seems to be um, putting me under the pump. It's just, yeah. you know, and it's not me taking money no, to work in them for the longer. Yeah, the horse gets there yeah. mentally and physically. Yeah. And they get ridden by little people that ride short. So, yeah. you know, they've got to be going well. With small brains. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> I'm small, but I have a big brain. You know, and I'm jockey. female. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, the horse that was behind us just before is Silver Stratum. So for all you proud owners out there, that was him. And we've also got Good Journey in here. And who's the other one across the back? You can't be. You All right, so this is Christina. And thanks for joining us, Christina, on this week's edition of ATB TV. Oh, pleasure. And thank you for coming and uh, meeting me and, and seeing your guys and stuff. It's it's nice to have you here. It's um, It puts a face to a name as well. So yeah. it's good. So thank you. Great. Thanks very much. All right, and this is Christina. And we'll see you soon. Well, there you have it. That's Christine Jeffries from Kyneton, one of our pre-trainers. She does a fantastic job and we're just so happy to have her a part of the ATB team. As you can see, she has a great environment. The horses are well fed, they're happy and they really enjoy their work, which is really important when you're starting off a training preparation. So um, I've also added to this um, edition of ATB TV a newsletter where we've got some horses shares for sale. So if you're interested in getting involved in any of these horses, feel free to give myself or Darren a call and we can help you out with that. So until next week, I'm Shona Dreschler and I'll see you then.